Hello, my name is Chris Bailey and I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're gonna be finally making a cookie. Let's do it. Now, if you're brand new to Blender, why don't you check out the free Blender Basics course at cgcookie.com. Links are in the description below. Go check it out. Okay, so today the plan is to make this chocolate chip cookie image. We're gonna try and make it as mouthwatering as possible. I hope you're excited and ready to dive in. Now, it's been a long time coming, this tutorial. It's about time we've made a cookie tutorial on CG Cookie. Uh, so I hope you're excited. We've got some cool tricks ahead. Uh, we're gonna show you how to make uh, this kind of a shape. It's really interesting. So let's start off. Cookies have a lot of, a lot of sub detail, like a lot of surface detail going on. And it's pretty tough to emulate, especially some of like the puffing up that you get. Um, between sections of a cookie. So, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and hit A to select all and X to delete just to get a clear scene. And I'm gonna go Shift A Mesh UV Sphere and I'll scale it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna pop into the side view and I'm gonna go into edit mode. And I'm gonna switch to transparent view right here up at the top. And I'm gonna hit B to box select and I'm gonna select all these bottom vertexes and then X to delete, delete those vertexes. Then I'll hit A to select all and I'm going to scale Z and I'm just going to bring all this down a little bit. We're just kind of creating a bit of a cookie cookie shape, a general cookie surface shape. Now I'm going to hold down Alt, I'm going to switch to edge mode, hold down Alt and select this bottom edge. Let me turn off transparent mode so it's a bit easier to see. I'm going to hit E to extrude and S to scale and bring it in a little bit. E again, S to scale, bring it in and I'll just bring it right down to here and I'll go F3 grid fill. Now. What I want to do next is I want to have kind of um, an even um, even balance of faces. So what I want to do is create some loop cuts in here just so that the squares, uh, the faces in here kind of end up being similar to the size up here. I also want to make sure I don't have any that are too off, which this all looks pretty good. I think it'll be fine. So I'm going to go control R and I'll just roll my mouse wheel. Yeah, maybe just to get three loops. I think that kind of makes it all just a little bit more even. Okay, now I'm going to bring it back down to the surface of my of my world. But first, I'm going to set my origin to be back onto the uh, the base of my cookie. So I will again hold down Alt and select that loop, and then Shift S, cursor to selected. That'll put the cursor right at the medium point of all these edges. And then I get out of object or edit mode, and I'll go up to Object Set Origin, Origin to 3D cursor. And that'll put the origin right up there. Now I can just come over here and hit zero on the Z. And now it's going to be locked right there on the base. Okay, so we've got a cookie, sort of. Let's right click, shade smooth. And now we're going to do a fancy little trick. We're going to move here to modifiers. We're going to add an ocean modifier to this thing. You heard me, ocean modifier. So we're going to click that and bam, just like that. You can see magically we now have a giant chocolate chip cookie. No, we don't. We've got a we've got an ocean. Why is why are we using the ocean modifier? Well, I had a big explore in Blender trying to figure out what's the best way to create the shape of these sort of ridges that you get in a cookie. And I actually found that the ocean modifier gave us the best shape out of all the different options that I explored. So we're going to use this. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch from geometry here and from generate. We're going to go displace. And this is going to use the geometry that we have inherently, which is, you know, the cookie itself and it's going to displace that geometry. So what I want to do now is change these settings a little bit and just fill around with it until I start getting the right shape. So I'm going to change my size. I'll bring that down. I'm going to create a little more geometry by adding a subdivision surface. I'll put that first, just drag that up here, and I'll just crank that up to two. Get some crazy, uh, crazy results here. We're actually going to look at the bottom. So I'm going to switch my view and swing around to the bottom because the top, right, is going to give us um, you know, this is going to look like the surface of the ocean, but you'll notice on the other side, we're going to start getting these, these sort of puffed regions, which uh, is exactly what we're after. So the main things that we want here are going to be the size, which is sort of the size of the waves. And this will create sort of change the size of how you know close everything gets when it bunches up. And the other thing is the time, which just kind of moves it through time. Um, so you can just roll this to look for interesting shapes. Um, and then the random seed and the spatial size. So the spatial size I've got set to nine. It might be different depending on how big or little you scaled yours, but um, you could just tick through these to have a look. You're gonna get different types of shapes. Okay, so I finally found a shape that I'm happy with. Uh, let me walk you through what numbers I've ended up doing. I increased my resolution here. I'll just open up my view a little bit. 
my resolution viewport and my render are set to eight. This is sort of how detailed is it going to go when it actually uh, goes into render to create these uh, these wave shapes. Um, but we're going to be applying this. So this doesn't really matter. It just kind of determines how much geometry is in play. Um, I've got my subdivision surface set to two. And then what I did is I played around with the waves controls, so changing the scale to get the overall size and the smallest wave value, which can sort of uh, make it more or less uh, complicated. So I wanted it to be really, really dense. So I brought this right down to zero. And then the choppiness is sort of how much these, these shapes bunch up together. And we want them to be bunched up. We want them to kind of be like right up next to each other. Try and get these like creases is really what we're, we're after. So I've set my choppiness to 0.9. And that's really the main controls here for this one. And then we've got the scale, which changes the overall size as well. And, and then I played around with the size, the spatial size, the time, and the random seed. All these things just kind of kept rolling and rolling until I found something that I thought, I, this kind of feels like a cookie. It's not you know, totally a cookie. But again, we're looking at the bottom. So don't forget. So if you look at the top, it's going to look like waves. This side's going to look like a cookie. This should be called the ocean slash cookie modifier. OK, so now that we've got this, we're going to take our sphere. We're going to call this cookie. And I'm going to shift D to duplicate. And I'm just going to hide this first. In fact, I want to create a collection. And I'll just turn it off and I'll drag this first one into that collection. So it's just off. It's not visible in our scene anymore. All right, so now we've got our, our wavy cookie thing, but we're going to need to shape this, right? So first thing I want to do is before we apply these modifiers, I'm going to edit mode and um, I'm going to grab just this top half. So I'm going to grab one of these vertexes uh, from the top, just that center one. Well, by top, I mean, you know, it's the bottom of what we modeled. So technically we modeled the wrong shape, but don't hold me to that. Anyways, so we're going to click that one and I'm going to hit control plus to expand my selection until I get everything on the, this, the, the bottom bit of this cookie, which will be the top. And I'm going to hit G and oops, I'm gonna turn off portion editing, G and Z and just bring it up a little bit like this. Just to kind of separate it from the bottom. And uh, then we can hit, let's see, uh, let's hit alt. Actually, let's grab the center vertex. I'm going to go back to transparent mode, make sure I've got that center vertex at the very bottom selected and control plus to expand that selection out to here and I'll grab Z here and I can also scale a little bit scale Z just to flatten it out some um, and we're gonna mainly it's just getting these two sides separated so we can work with them a bit easier so there we go so that's pretty good uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and apply this stuff so I'm gonna hit uh, apply for my subdivision surface and apply for my ocean modifier so now this is just mesh and um, I still have these bottom guys selected. Uh, so I'm going to uh, turn on proportional editing. And this bit, you're going to kind of have to sculpt the shape that you want using these tools. And it can be a little fiddly, but uh, I'll just kind of show you my approach to it. So with the bottom group selected and proportional editing turned on, I can hit S to scale and Z. And I can roll my mouse wheel. And this will allow me to kind of flatten out the base of my cookie. I'm going to have to go fully flat with it, but I'll just bring it like this. Um, and then I can grab Z, I can bring it up like that, and that's going to give me uh, much more of a cookie shape. So I could even then scale it out a bit and roll that mouse wheel so that it, you know, kind of tapers a little bit. And the other thing you can do as well, if you're not quite happy, like you can see here from the top, right? I don't have quite a round shape, which is fine because the cookie doesn't have to be round. But if yours is really weird and you want to start rounding it out, what you can do is you can go to edge mode and we can uh, select one of these edges along the side like this, and we can turn on proportional editing and then go F3 and type in two sphere and then roll or drag your mouse and roll your mouse wheel. The combination of those two things and this is going to kind of spherize your cookie um, and push it out. So you can get some really weird effects with this. It's going to turn the entire thing like into a sphere. Um, but you can see if I uh, just roll my mouse wheel a little bit and I just spherize some of it, it's going to just start to round out the shape. Now, once again, I need to set my origin. So um, I'm going to just select one of these rings, shift S, uh, cursor to selected, get out of that, and then go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And then I could just set it back down on the ground. Bada bing, bada boom. We've got ourselves the beginnings of a cookie. OK, so now that we've got a basic cookie shape with our mesh, uh, we're going to go and start work on materials. So I'm going to switch over to render view for Eevee and I'll come over to my camera icon here and I'll turn on ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections. I'll go shift A to create a camera and I will jump into that camera and I'll come over here to the view tab and I will turn on lock camera to view, which is just right here. And I'll just find myself a nice frame. I can't really see what I'm doing because it's so dark, but that's all right. <laughs> 
And uh, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn off scene world just so I can use one of the built in HDRIs that Blender has. I'll switch to this indoor environment and uh, just get my, my angle looking all right. I'll turn off lock camera to view. And um, I'm going to go shift a mesh plane and scale a plane up just to give me something uh, like a table surface. And let's see, I'll just position this right here. I'll just make sure it's zeroed out actually. So it's right on the ground there. And I'm gonna go back to my camera, come to the camera tab, go to viewport display and turn up passport two. So I can just focus on my image. And then what I wanna do is I'm going to give this ground a bit of a material. So I'll select the plane and I'll come to the material tab, click new, and I'll just turn this base color right down. And I might turn the roughness down as well so it starts to reflect a little bit. Um, what we're going to do is basically create a lot of this material with um, some Musgrave um, texture. And it's going to create the bump that's going to give this thing the realism that we're after. Let's go ahead and set a base color for this. I'll come down here, grab like kind of a brownish gold. And um, I'm also going to add a bit of subsurface scattering as well because light kind of penetrates into the cookie dough or the surface of the cookie a bit. I'll give it a bit more of like a rosy yellowish kind of color, kind of a salmon color maybe. And I'll just turn it up a little bit. I don't need a whole lot of subsurf, just a touch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a Musgrave texture. So Shift A and grab a Musgrave. I'll just zoom in here so you can see really clearly. I'll go over here and go grab a texture coordinate node as well. And we're gonna use the object coordinate into the vector. And then I'm gonna grab a bump map. And I will plug the bump into the normal. And I'm also gonna grab a color ramp. It should have us all set up. Plug the height into the factor. And then we're gonna take the color and we're gonna plug it into the height of our bump. Just spread these out, not so cramped. Okay, so we're gonna take the scale down, but not too much. And I'll take my detail uh, up and my dimension down. This will kind of help break up the surface of this Musgrave material. Um, I'll bring my scale down again to make it even bigger. And we're going for this kind of a pattern. Um, I'll keep these spread out like that and everything else should be good. So I'm gonna take my distance down. Oh, I just realized I plugged my color ramp in the wrong place. It's not supposed to go in the normal, it's supposed to go in the height. Rookie mistake. Okay, so this bump is kind of going in the wrong way. I want it to kind of go down. So uh, I'm gonna swap this color ramp. So we're gonna invert what's going on here. And we get this nice pattern. Now we're gonna take our distance down to 0.1. Um, smaller distance tends to look better um, with small objects like that. So um, this is a pretty good start. I might take the scale down a bit more. And let's see, I'll take the lucernity down. Um, I'm just trying to get like large general bumps uh, going on across the cookie surface. Okay, so now that I've got this, I've gone with a scale of 9.2, detail of 5, and dimension of 1.9, lucernity of 1.3, just to kind of give me this loose, kind of large-ish looking shape, um, shaped bump. Now we're going to do a more fine detailed one. So I'm going to duplicate, but shift D, this Musgrave texture, I'll grab the object coordinate again, and I'll grab another color ramp, and I'll plug the height into this. And now we need to mix these together. So I'm gonna create a little more room, and I'm gonna grab a mix RGB shader, and I'm gonna switch it to multiply, turn the factor up, I'll drop it in the, the node path here, and I'll take the second color, and I'll just drop it into the second color input. Now this is gonna multiply these two together. Of course, they're the same at the moment. So I'm gonna bring the detail of this one or the scale of this one right up and I'll bring the dimension down and I'm just gonna play with that. When you bring the dimension down, it starts to break up the shape and then the lucernity as well kind of makes it even more uh, detailed. So I'm just gonna play with that. There we go. Okay, so with this one, I've gone for a scale of 4.6, detail of 8.3, dimension of 0.2, and a lucernity of 1.5. So it's basically a much more fine detail, but not super, super fine. It's just kind of in between the two. And now what we can do is we can affect how much bump we're going to get from these by changing the black and white values on these color ramps. So I can come here to this fine detail bump, and I can bring the black right up uh, to this, right up to the top. And that's going to really kind of back it off and uh, make it much more subtle. And I'm going to do the same for this one. I'm going to back it all right off. 
and then come up here, uh, maybe right around something like 0.5, maybe 0.6 on the vibrancy, 0.7. Um, and then just play with these values a little bit more. I'm just looking for something that uh, maybe yeah, a little more dimension, a little less dimension, I mean. Bring this one down, make it a bit more pronounced. All right, cool. Now we could probably make one more level of uh, super fine detail, so might as well do that. I'm going to Shift D to duplicate, again grab the object vector, and again grab a color ramp, and take the height in here to the factor. And we'll need another RGB mix, RGB set to multiply, and I'll bring this one in as well. And then for this one, I'll just take my scale way up and my lucernity up as well. And I'll just zoom in here so you can see this. I'm just going to drag this one right up so we get lots of little fine micro detail. This is going to really break up the surface of our object. There we go. So now these three levels of bump uh, are hopefully going to work together really well to create a believable cookie surface. Now let's use one of these to drive the materials uh, color a little bit as well. So right now um, let's take this top one and I'm going to shift D to duplicate this color ramp and I'll plug the height into it and I'll just grab the color that we already have for the cookie uh, for both pips right here and right here. And then what I'll do is I will plug this into the base color, move this off to the side here. And then I'll take one of these and maybe darken it up a little bit. And this will help kind of just create a little more believability because that you won't be such a uniform color. You can see it's really starting to, to look nice there. We could potentially do that with do the same with one of these. So I could grab, um, let's see, we could even try grabbing everything further down on the pipe, like maybe this one right here and plug this into the factor. We can see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks quite nice. I think the second one looks good. I've just flipped the color ramp, so it looked a bit weird here because the dark bits weren't sort of lining up in the way that it feels like it should. So I just flipped this around. And you can see just by flipping it around now, the dark bits are kind of these recessed areas, and that looks a lot more natural um, and looks more and more like a proper kind of cookie. So looking good, looking really good. All right, now subsurface, I think I'm going to keep it low. We could pump it up a little bit, but yeah, let's say like 1.13 is actually looking pretty, pretty nice. Now we're going to need some chocolate chips in this cookie. So what I'm going to do is go shift A and create um, an isosphere. And I'm going to just create some variation in it by going here, by adding a modifier. We're going to add a, uh, let's see, displacement modifier. I'm going to click new for the texture. And I'll just click here to go to the texture tab. And we're going to switch this to clouds under the type. And I'll just bring the size up on this and then come over here and take the strength up as well. I'll just grab it up so it's above our cookie and we can actually actually see it. I'll right click, shade smooth, scale it down a bit um, and just play with this a little bit till it starts getting a bit of a unique shape. Now, what I want to do is switch the, um, the coordinates from local to global. And so now wherever I drag this thing in 3D space, it's going to change its shape. So I just want to make sure it's actually getting a shape that's going to work. And I'm going to add in probably a subdivision surface as well, just after it here, set it to two. And this will create lots of different types of shapes that we can use as chocolate chips. So I'm going to just grab Z, bring it down, and I'm going to G, hit G, and then shift Z, which will turn off the Z motion. And I can just kind of move it around on the surface of my, uh, my cookie and find some nice nice places to put it. I'm also going to add a chocolate material. So let's click new with this guy and we'll just bring the base color down, give it a bit of a red hue and we're going to turn on subsurface scattering for it. Turn up to like 0.3. I'll just match that color because it's a good one. I think this might go a little bit brighter with it. So it's kind of like a reddish hue. You see, um, and I'll bring that subsurface down. So as we have just a little bit of it, I think that'll look pretty good. Um, also, we'll make the roughness quite low on these chips so that they're a bit like wet, like they're kind of um, melted a little bit. That looks pretty nice. I might darken this up just a little bit. Okay, so now I just need to make a few of these. I might call this uh, chip just so I don't get lost because I'm going to multiply these. I need to duplicate and grab Z, just moving it around just finding some cool intersection points and scaling 
Um, we can adjust as well what's going on with this displacement because it looks like it's a bit crazy. But also scale Z to flatten it out. That's probably a good idea. That'll give us a bit more consistent. And what's cool is if you tuck it right down into these little like valleys and then scale it up, uh, it's going to intersect and really feel like it's kind of filled those valleys in, you know, like the chocolate's melted and, um, you know, it looks, looks quite good. So this, this one's trying to uh, escape the cookie. Um, can't have that. There we go. It's looking nice. All right, let's get some more light in this. I'm going to jump into my camera and I'm actually going to take all my chips and I will control click my cookie and then control P to parent and I'll parent all those guys. Also drag them into the same collection. So they all are now underneath my cookie. And now what I can do is I can actually grab my cookie, right click, select hierarchy. It'll select all the chips as well. And then I can shift D to duplicate and I can grab Z and I can rotate and just reposition these guys. My chips are <laughs> going absolutely nuts. There we go. Okay, so got a nice little composition. We got some cookies. Let's put some lights in here and actually make this thing look a bit brighter. We've kind of made this in the dark, so <laughs> I'm gonna grab a sun lamp and I'll just adjust this. And I'm gonna switch over to scene world and scene lights, and I'll just start turning these up. And I'll shift D to duplicate, rotate this one around. Like, so I've got my two lights here um, and I've got scene world turned off still. I can adjust the strength of the environment texture so I can kind of bring that around to kind of get a sense of how bright I want it to be. I can also rotate um, with this top one here just to change the lighting a little bit. All right, now uh, to really give it uh, a realistic look, let's take our camera and I'm gonna turn on depth of field and I'll just bring my f-stop right down and then drag out my focus distance just so the the, uh, the closest cookies start to get in focus. Just zoom in a little bit. So on a nice focus point, and then we'll just bring this right down. Looks great. Now, if you want to have some like crumbs and stuff, you could grab one of these cookies and shift D to duplicate. Grab shift Z, bring it around, and then like intersect the ground with it. Right, scale it. Let's bring it up just so you get a little bit of some, some bits and there you have it chocolate chip cookies i hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned some really cool things if you did please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel leave us a comment let us know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future and uh, don't forget to check out cgcookie.com i mean you just made a cookie so you know go check out the website thanks so much i'll catch you in the next tutorial until then have a fantastic week see you later bye